Welcome back to the Lost Book of Herbal Remedies. I'm Emma, and today we're diving into the emerging COVID-19 XEC variant. It's causing concern as it spreads rapidly across Europe and has begun appearing here in the United States. Alex, this variant is raising quite a few alarms, isn't it? It certainly is, Emma. The XEC variant is a recombinant strain of two Omicron subvariants, KS.1.1 and KP3.3. What's particularly worrying is its enhanced transmissibility and potential to evade immunity from previous infections and vaccinations. This means it could spread more easily and infect people who might have thought they were protected. That's definitely concerning. It was first detected in Germany back in June and has since been found in countries like Poland, Norway, Luxembourg, Ukraine, and Portugal. There have also been cases reported here in the U.S., including some in California. What makes this variant more transmissible than others? Researchers, including Dr. Eric Topol, have noted that the XEC variant has mutations in the spike protein, the part of the virus that attaches to our cells. These mutations may enhance the virus's ability to infect host cells and partially evade the immune responses we've developed through vaccines or prior infections. So even people who are vaccinated or have had COVID before might be at risk of infection with XEC. Exactly. While vaccines are still expected to offer substantial protection against severe illness, there's a possibility that they might not prevent infection entirely with this variant. This underscores the importance of staying vigilant and considering booster shots as they become available. Speaking of symptoms, are there any differences with the XEC variant compared to previous strains? For the most part, symptoms are similar fever, cough, shortness of breath, fatigue, sore throat, and nasal congestion. However, there have been anecdotal reports of more severe symptoms like extreme fatigue and significant body aches. Some patients have described these symptoms as more intense than what they've experienced with other variants. That's worrisome, especially for vulnerable populations like the elderly and those with pre-existing conditions. How does vaccine hesitancy play into the spread of variants like XEC? Vaccine hesitancy is a significant hurdle. When a sizable portion of the population remains unvaccinated, it gives the virus more opportunities to spread and mutate. Factors like deliberate ignorance, where people choose to avoid information, and cognitive distortions, such as overestimating the risks of vaccines while underestimating the dangers of the virus, contribute to hesitancy. So addressing vaccine hesitancy is crucial not just for individual protection, but also for preventing the emergence of new variants. Absolutely. By increasing vaccination rates, we reduce the virus's ability to spread and evolve, which in turn lowers the risk of new, potentially more dangerous variants like XEC. Let's shift focus to immunocompromised individuals. How does the XEC affect them differently? Immunocompromised people are at higher risk because their bodies may not clear the virus as quickly, leading to prolonged infections. This not only increases their risk of severe illness, but also provides more opportunities for the virus to mutate within their bodies, potentially leading to antiviral resistant strains. That really highlights the importance of tailored treatment strategies and close monitoring for these individuals. Exactly. It's also a reminder of the need for innovative treatments and vaccines that can offer better protection for everyone, including universal or mucosal vaccines that target the virus more effectively. Now, while vaccines and medical treatments are vital, Let's discuss how we can support our immune systems naturally. Herbal remedies can be a complementary approach. What are some herbs that might help during this time? Certainly. Elderberry is a great starting point. It's known for its antiviral properties and can support the immune system by inhibiting viral replication. And then there's Andrographis, which is renowned for boosting the immune system and reducing inflammation. It's particularly helpful for symptoms like fever and sore throat. Astragalus is another herb worth mentioning. It's an adaptogen that helps modulate and strengthen the immune system, which can be especially beneficial for those who are immunocompromised. Licorice root also comes to mind. It has antiviral and anti-inflammatory properties and can soothe the respiratory tract, a common area affected by COVID-19. Green tea is a simple yet effective addition. The catechins, especially EGCG, have shown antiviral effects and can help boost overall immune defenses. For those dealing with prolonged or severe infections, Nigella sativa, also known as black seed, has strong anti-inflammatory and immunomodulatory properties that might help reduce symptom severity. Lastly, Pelargonium sedoides, also known as Umkaloabo, 
is traditionally used for respiratory infections and can help reduce cough and congestion while supporting the immune system. These herbal remedies can be valuable allies, but it's important to remember they should complement, not replace, conventional medical treatments. Always consult a healthcare provider before adding new herbs to your regimen. Absolutely. It's crucial to ensure that these herbs are appropriate for your individual health situation and won't interact with any medications you're taking. Quality and purity are also important. Make sure to source herbs from reputable suppliers. To wrap things up, the emergence of the XCC variant is a stark reminder that the pandemic is still evolving. We need to stay informed, continue practicing preventive measures, and support our health in every way we can. Well said, Emma. Combining medical interventions with natural support can help us navigate these challenging times more effectively. Thanks for sharing your insights, Alex. For more detailed information on these topics in the full article, visit herbalbloom.org. Stay healthy, stay informed, and we'll see you next time on The Lost Book of Herbal Remedies.